the most important recreational fishery used to be right outside our front door. It was the Straits of Georgia. It was a fishery that generated about $750 million a year. It used to catch huge numbers of Chinook and Co. and everybody I knew was a recreational fisher. Well, that disappeared in two years, 94 and 95. Researchers hope advanced technology will give them some insight if harbor seals are deserving of a bad rap for devouring prized salmon, which used to be abundant in the Strait of Georgia. One of the reasons why there's so much concern about harbor seals in relation to Chinook and Coho is because there was this exponential increase in the number of harbor seals during the period when uh, survival of Chinook and Coho was declining. This is something that everybody says is the demise of salmon, that there's too many seals and they're eating all the fish. We really don't have any direct estimate of that. Little scientific evidence exists whether predation by harbor seals on juvenile salmon can explain the decline and lack of recovery of coho and chinook in the Salish Sea. So we wanted to come up with a project that would actually produce definitive data as to what that predation rate is. The Big Qualicum River hatchery releases about 350,000 coho smolt in early May, which leave the sanctuary of the river and head to open ocean, where the salmon will spend the next two to three years of their lives. And for the first time ever, about 35 to 40,000 of the coho salmon have a small tag in them called a pit tag. There's a little glass bead that's about the size of the end of your pen, and every one of them is uniquely coated, so when it goes through an antenna, it will discharge its code so we know exactly what fish that is. Austin is tracking 20 adult harbor seals, which have had satellite tracking tags glued to their heads that will read the pit tags of any of the smolts that get eaten and when and where the seals are catching the salmon. So the way that we did this was by integrating an accelerometer. And the accelerometer is the same thing that's in, in a Wii, same thing that helps your phone go from portrait to landscape mode. And if you think about a, a seal's head, it's kind of like a coiled spring. And every time they try to catch a fish, they do what's called a head strike. So that, that, that spring discharges. So what we're doing is we're measuring that acceleration. So we have a high sampling rate accelerometer that's measuring the acceleration of the head of the seal. And every time it does one of those head strikes, it turns on the pit tag scanner. So we're only sampling, we're only looking for a pit tag when we know that they're actively feeding on fish. And so what we've done is we tried to have them put onto seals in this immediate area around the mouth of the Qualicum River. In this area, harbor seal scat analysis has revealed herring and hake is their primary food, and salmonids only made up about 4% of the overall diet. But the species and age of those salmon isn't known. If I had to, to wager a guess, I'd probably say that we are going to have sort of a small number of animals that are hanging out in the mouth of that river that are going to have a pretty high predation rate. Um, outside of that area, um, I suspect that you were going to see sort of a low level predation as those uh, coho sort of disperse. Um, but I do suspect that we will get detections by those, those seals that are sort of in the non-estuary areas, like the rocky reef sites. The batteries in the readers are expected to last about two months. Plenty of time to collect data before the seal molts at the end of summer and grows a new fur coat when the tag unit will fall off. We're going to be getting data in real time. So as soon as these guys go out and we start getting detections, I'm going to be getting that information uh, via satellites at my computer. Um, so we're going to be sort of keeping a running tally of what that predation rate is. And then once the, the study is completed and we, we sort of pool all, that, all the data from the different tags, uh, we'll be publishing that probably in the next year. The data collected will be used to create maps of potential predation hotspots that could be taking place during that critical period when the juvenile salmon are leaving the protected rivers and streams and heading out to sea. At the Qualicum River, I'm Annette Lucas.